Welcome back. A York University student's request not to do group work with women on religious grounds has created a flurry of discussions about accommodations, both amongst Muslims and in the larger Canadian public. <laughs> Have we taken the idea of religious accommodation too far? How can we balance competing rights? And how should Muslims relate to members of the opposite sex? With me to discuss this subject, Dr. Shabir Ali, President of the Islamic Information Centre. Now, Dr. Shabir, we should mention, of course, that you know we don't know the the religion of the individual at hand. You know, he could be a Muslim, he could be someone else. But we're discussing this in the context of him being a Muslim because there's been so much discussion about um, it in the media. So we thought we should uh, also give our take. Um, so, what are your thoughts on this? Um, here's an individual who took a course, um, an online course and part of the requirement was that this individual meet with um, other students um, outside of the classroom um, to do some group work. And this individual said, well, I can't do that on religious grounds. Yeah, we, we shouldn't assume anything about the, the religion of this particular individual, mm -hmm. but we can ask that and now that we see that this accommodation is available, uh, should Muslims be seeking this kind of accommodation? Uh, is it a requirement of our religion that, that we must have this kind of accommodation uh, for us to be better Muslims mm -hmm. in of the Of course, the student wasn't allowed uh, eventually to, you know, he, he had to work with, the, with women at the end, right? And he agreed to that at the end. Oh, okay. So um, uh, we, we can still look at the question, should Muslims be seeking this kind mm -hmm. of accommodation, even if it is available? Yes. Uh, Shahina Siddiqui, uh, Samira Kanji, and others have argued very cogently in an article published in the Toronto Star uh, that uh, uh, such uh, accommodations actually should be available because uh, in, in the Canadian context, we grant uh, religious accommodation for, for people on the grounds that they hold sincerely to certain religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. We do not judge the validity of their religious beliefs. Uh, as a multicultural and, and secular country, uh, we, we, we cannot start prying into the beliefs of people and, and judging their beliefs. Otherwise, we have to be experts on Islam, on Hinduism, on Buddhism, on all religions. And we have to dictate for people what they're supposed to believe mm -hmm. as a genuine part of their faith. We are then, as a state, going to determine what is genuine religion and what is not. Uh, then we become like uh, religious authorities. Yeah, it's and people have different interpretations of, of the same, even though they're members of the same religion, they will have different interpretations, different understandings of how to practice that religion. True. So uh, Canadian religious accommodation uh, then uh, is on the basis of people's sincerely held religious mm -hmm. belief. Yes. It's, that's their sincerely held religious belief. And uh, give, granting them the accommodation will not be harmful to other people or uh, contrary to other uh, important uh, Canadian principles. Well, then that uh, accommodation will be granted. So the specifics of this particular case and uh, w whether that accommodation should have been granted or not, this is uh, a question to further discuss. And uh, uh, Siddiqui and Kanji and others have uh, shown that, in fact, there are good grounds uh, for the university's original decision to grant the accommodation. But uh, uh, thinking more generally, uh, are Muslims required to have such uh, accommodation given our context? And I would say that given the Canadian context in which um, generally things are done together uh, among the, uh, I mean between the genders, uh, it, it, to ask for such an accommodation uh, by Muslims is uh, really uh, to uh, make the Islamic religion run contrary to uh, the way in which things are normally done uh, in, in a way that does not add that much to the religious uh, uh, practice of, of Muslims and at the same time will give a kind of negative feeling in, in the Canadian public uh, against the religion of Islam. So balancing these two considerations, it seems to me that uh, this is not an accommodation that uh, Muslim students uh, should be seeking out. What about if somebody, uh, a Muslim student, actually believes that this is required by Islam? How do you respond to that? Yeah, then I would try to um, appeal to that Muslim's understanding and try to show them that in fact Islam is very tolerant and balanced. In uh, the, the, the way in which uh, Islam came to be practiced in many different societies, that's a different issue. And in a certain context, uh, if you, uh, because men and women do not generally interact at all in, 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 um, in a variety of contexts, then of course if a, a sort of interaction is proposed, then naturally one would shy away from it. And, 
and one would seek ways of avoiding uh, the interaction because I in a certain context, if you uh, interact with a person of the opposite sex, uh, questions might be raised about your personal character. And in any case, it is something that you're not accustomed to. You see, if you're not accustomed, if, uh, if, if, if boys and girls are not accustomed to meeting, uh, let's say, uh, teenage boys and girls, then uh, when, if they do meet for the first time, then it becomes uh, a kind of temptation to each of them. But if the meeting is normal, uh, this uh, happens again and again every day, then uh, it does not become an immediate tem temptation in that context. And uh, naturally, a, a Muslim student, whether man or woman, uh, or uh, uh, employee in, in a workplace, uh, in that situation, they could also be drawn into temptation. And people are drawn into temptation all of the time. But uh, the uh, hope is that uh, by, by reading the Quran, by doing the things that Muslims normally do as, uh, as a matter of what is referred to in academic circles as cultic practice, uh, those items of worship in the faith, then a certain character develops in the person that will guard that person against falling into these temptations. So the, the temptation is there among Muslim scholars to draw barriers and, and uh, protective devices to make sure that the average Muslim does not fall into temptation. Uh, but uh, we should resist that temptation to draw these barriers and okay. leave it up to people when God has left it up. Mm -hmm. See, God has given certain laws in the Quran. It says these are boundaries that you cannot cross. Uh, we cannot draw a boundary in front of that boundary to, to make sure that people don't reach the boundary uh, because then we're putting a new boundary. So in so the absence of these boundaries, then how, how should we relate to members of the opposite sex um, in, in Western society? Well, certain things are prescribed in the Quran. For example, decent dress uh, for both men and women. Uh, the Quran uh, also uh, prescribes decent speech. So when you speak to each other, you, you do not cross the lines of decency. The Quran uh, prescribes that both men and women should uh, lower their gaze or turn away th their gaze. So, uh, and, and it actually says some of the, some of the gaze. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not all, because uh, to a certain extent you have to look at the other person, you have to see who is speaking to you, you sometimes identification is necessary. Uh, but in any case, in interpersonal communications, uh, body language speaks a lot, you need to see the facial expressions and so on. So uh, a certain amount of looking at the other person, this is allowable. Uh, and uh, to take it beyond that, when it becomes uh, an act of leering or ogling, this obviously now is uh, crossing the line. So it's left to individual judgment when the line is crossed. So this is not spelled out in all details in, in the Quran itself. And indiv Muslim individuals will have to then use their judgment in the situations in which they are uh, to make sure that they are not uh, crossing uh, the acceptable lines. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you for that, Brother Shabir. You're welcome. We'll take a break. When we return, we will answer questions we received from you, our viewers.